From a long list of display issues, to random reboots, to screen flashes, this year's punching bag has been the Google Pixel 2 XL. Sure, it doesn't explode like last year's victim, but the issues have even pushed Google to extend your warranty for a second year. Cases like these are the reason why we like to take our time with reviews, and it turns out that Google has done a lot over the past three weeks to solve these issues. I'm Jaime Rivera with Pocket Now, and it's time for our Google Pixel 2 XL review, brought to you by Dbrand. Twenty seventeen is definitely not a good year for mistakes. Never have we had so many great phones, and allow me to shock you, but the Pixel 2 XL is nearly at the top of my list. For all those early complaints, the things that were unchangeable were done right, and everything else has been patched along the way. As opposed to last year's Pixel, this is actually a good looking phone. It does retain some elements, like being a phone that I love to hold and love to use, and its main differentiation for 2017 is that I now love how it looks. The textured aluminum provides an added grip that's less prone to fingerprints. The glass accent at the top helps it stand out from the crowd. The curvy shape allows a more futuristic appeal that's delightful to hold. All in all, this is a well-crafted phone. Now, if you came here to hear rants about the display, I am sorry that I can't indulge. Google's recent software update now includes a saturated mode that leaves this OLED on par with competitors, making it awesome that you can choose if you want accurate colors or if you want more saturation. We've already proven that the bluish shift is a common trait of OLEDs, and yes, I do notice a small screen burn-in that's actually not even noticeable on camera, and that's mainly because it goes away after a few minutes. And everything else, I love that this 6-inch panel adopts a more modern approach as competing devices, and that content consumption is enhanced thanks to these loud front-firing speakers, as every phone should have. Let me put this to you into perspective. What we don't have, when compared to last year's Pixel, is a headphone jack, which is definitely a shame after all the fanfare of it being a flagship feature according to Google's marketing. <clears throat> we also don't have newer specifications, but I won't complain about those as technology hasn't really evolved over this amount of time. Yes, we might be missing the trend of 6 gigabytes of RAM, but we do have the latest Qualcomm Snapdragon 835, and our variant includes 128 gigabytes of non-expandable storage, Bluetooth 5, and the Pixel finally gains IP67 water and does resistance, something that was long overdue. Now, will you be missing out on those extra 2 gigabytes of RAM? Mm, no. Keep in mind that this is a Pixel, and software is one of the things that it gets right. Expect three years of immediate updates to the latest version of Android, and so far Oreo has proven to be a true delight. I praise little things like the density of the launcher, and the quick access to the Google feed when you swipe to the left, the quick access to the Google search from the bottom of the display where it should have always been, and probably one of my favorites is these Google Earth wallpapers that have their own way of being dynamic. Features like picture-in-picture -picture give a logical sense to using a phablet for productivity. Pressing and holding icons with notification dots also helps you get a quick glance of what you're missing out on. I'm still not a fan of the new emojis, but they look far better than the Slimer icons that we had years ago. And about the whole squeezing the phone for the Google Assistant? Yeah, that's a feature that's nice to have, but over time I've learned that I really don't use it. And then there are all the benefits of actually using a Pixel as your daily driver. First of all, it's approach to storage. I ordered the 128GB variant simply because it was quicker to get, but I feel you won't need the extra storage. Buying a Pixel gives you unlimited storage in Google Photos, and that allowed me to survive just fine with the 32GB variant last year. The second benefit is Project Fi. Google's MVNO has a unique way to help you jump between Sprint, T-Mobile, US Cellular, and Wi-Fi, and it roams at full LTE speeds, as opposed to other services. So far, phone calls have been great, and it doesn't really matter if I use the earpiece or the speakers, this phone is loud enough regardless. The third benefit is battery life. This is one of those phones that I simply don't worry about when it comes to it getting through the end of day. And this is all thanks to how the software is optimized along with the hardware. The fourth is performance. I heard some complaints of slowdowns, but so far I've only experienced it once three days ago in the morning. And playing graphics intensive games is not a problem whatsoever. 
The fifth and most important benefit, at least for me personally, is wow, this camera. Ratings have called this the best camera of 2017, and I am going to have to agree. The Google Pixel 2 XL has become the camera I can trust for absolutely every single scenario that I've thrown at it. Whether it's during the day or at night, HDR Plus pretty much guarantees that the phone will take the photo quick and provide the most optimized results for every scenario. Yes, this is definitely an unconventional approach to photography where software pretty much ensures that you'll have a delightful photo. But then again, that's exactly what I'm looking for. All I want is a delightful photo. Even the approach to portrait mode is unconventional. There is no secondary lens. And from the samples that I've compared between phones, Google's software approach has produced far better results. And I love how you get a second copy of the photo in case you don't want the software blur. This phone has also made me believe in selfies, with the best portrait selfie results, again, all through the magic of software. And that's even when compared to other devices that include hardware to pull it off. And then the same can be said about video where stabilization is top notch, at least from the primary sensor. The story is not the same with the selfie video, but not to the point of being uncomfortable. About the only thing that I don't like about video is how aggressive the phone is about noise cancellation with audio, but that's just me nitpicking. <sighs> All right, just arrived at the hotel room here in San Jose. To conclude, I'd like to point out something very important. This is not a review unit that we received from Google. We actually paid for this review unit. I'd like to make that clear because once again, this is not a fanboy show to praise a phone that's been panned by others. This is actually just a truly great phone that got fixed over time. It's a great phone to hold, a great phone to use, and it's just shocking how much I love using this camera. About the only thing holding me back from calling this the best phone of 2017 is definitely the bugs that Google has been ironing out. But the fact that Google has been able to fix them is a good sign. The Google Pixel 2 XL joins a very crowded list of phones that we recommend for 2017. This is not the most affordable option, but if you're looking for the ideal Android experience with a great camera, this is definitely the best option to choose from. And folks, fun fact, I wanted to pan the Google Pixel 2 XL, but it wasn't available in stock. So cool solution is dbrand. Dbrand skins will not only give you more color options, but also help you eliminate the fingerprints and smudges. Visit dbrand.com slash pixel2 to customize yours. And while you're at it, remember our comparisons of the Google Pixel 2 XL will come very soon. So make sure you subscribe to our channel and also follow us on social media. The top card will take you to our honeymoon phase with the Google Pixel 2 XL. The bottom will take you to the same video of the iPhone 10. You can also follow me on Twitter, Jaime underscore Rivera, on Instagram at Jaime Rivera. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I am Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.